from the Reverend Ken Kenneroff. Let's pray together. Loving and gracious God, you are the giver of all good gifts, and we thank you today for all of your blessings. We thank you for our Mayor and for all other councillors, for their service of you and others, and for all that this council has achieved to bless this community. We ask that you bless this council abundantly, and we continue to seek your wisdom, guidance, courage and strength. Be with them in their deliberations this evening, and help them to be wise in the decisions that they make for the good of all those who have placed their trust and confidence in their leadership. Give them insight to lead with integrity, that their decisions may reflect what is right and good. Help them to make decisions that are for the good of all. And dear Lord, grant us all the humility to always seek your will in all that we do and say. So may all glory be to you, loving God, now and always, through Jesus and the Holy Spirit forever. Amen. 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 May I I have apologies, please? Thank you, Madam Mayor. I have apologies from Councillors Fife, Gillam, Jarjusi, Kashid, and Lachmana. Thank you. Um, We can receive the minutes of the last council meeting held on the 2nd of November 2017. Agreed. Are we? Thank you. Have we any declarations of interest this evening? No. Thank you very much. Well, um, good evening, everyone, and happy New Year to you all. Well, here we are in 2018, and I'm now well over halfway through my mayoral year. So far, we have attended over 300 events, 40 of which were outside the borough. As I've said before, it is a great honour to represent the borough in this capacity, and I was recently very privileged to welcome to the parlour three World War II veterans who had been awarded the Légion d'Honneur Medal from the French government. This medal was awarded to all servicemen who had helped to liberate France after World War II. There were over 40,000 awarded, so some, unfortunately, received theirs in the post, rather than being specially presented. I was contacted by the son of one of the veterans who asked if I could make a special ceremony of presenting the medal. I was, of course, delighted to do this, And whilst organising it, we made inquiries as to whether there were any other veterans within the borough that had been awarded. We got all three, we had three of them, and they came to the parlour, and I read their citations and made a presentation of their medals and also arranged a cream tea for them and their families, and it was a lovely afternoon, and they were very, very pleased. Well, obviously, we were extremely busy in the run-up to Christmas with a number of nativity plays at the different schools within the borough. But one, a slightly different take on the story, due to a young eight-year-old Herod who felt he didn't have a big enough part to play, so he took it upon himself to remove his crown and join the three wise men to visit Jesus. It was also great to attend the lighting up of the Christmas tree in Trafalgar Square. It was lovely to meet the Mayor of Oslo and also to see a young 10-year-old boy in full mayoral robes 
introduced as the mayor of Soho and the mayor of Oslo's daughter both pressed the button to light up the tree. Interestingly, this year was the 70th anniversary of the presentation of this tree from Norway and they had ensured that the tree was 70 years old and the tree was 70 feet high. It was a very special occasion. And of course, we had quite a lot of Christmas dinners, numerous mince pies and a great deal of Christmas cake. At one point, I thought we might have egg and chips for Christmas dinner. But no, we didn't. We stuck to tradition and had turkey. Thank you to everyone who attended our last quiz night. It was a really great evening. There were 19 tables, and with Barclays matching all the monies raised, our fundraising for my charities is going very well. The date of the next quiz night has unfortunately had to be changed and is now on Wednesday the 31st of January. The date of the murder mystery supper has now been finalised as the 1st of March. The tickets are £30 and that includes a three-course meal. And just a reminder, if you are intending to attend my Thanksgiving civic service on Sunday the 4th of February, could you please let us know uh, for catering purposes? Thank you. Moving on, we have a question from the public from Mrs. Anna Williams. Thank you. My name's Anna Williams. I'm a Hillingdon pensioner, lately so-called of the dark force. This is my question. Following the publication of the Project Art Report, which identified over 450 buildings or obstacles around RAF Northolt that intrude into the safety zone for aircraft landing at the airport, can the leader confirm whether the MOD has informed the London Borough of Hillingdon whether any of its assets are identified as those objects. Given that those obstacles also include residential apartments of people living in the borough, will the leader seek assurances from the Ministry of Defence that all landowners of property and assets which have been identified as obstacles have been informed of the potential dangers to them, their families and their property? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you for your question, Mrs Williams, which you submitted for the Council meeting held 2nd November, but failed to meet the seven-day submission criteria and have resubmitted for tonight's meeting. By way of background, a lot has happened since the end of October when this question was constructed, and the issue of your campaign was raised at the November Council meeting. The report on what was said at that meeting is included in the current edition of Hillingdon People, and to put your question and my response into context, it is important that you, members of Council, and the public are aware of what I said, and accordingly I will read the Hillingdon People article on this matter. The headline is Who is Really Behind the Stop Northolt Campaign? At a Council meeting on Thursday the 2nd of November, Leader of the Council, Councillor Ray Puddyfoot, issued an open challenge to those organisations, commercial or otherwise, and individuals, funding and running the scaremongering campaign Stop Northolt to stop hiding and declare both themselves and their specific interest and level of financial support provided. I said we defend our residents against inappropriate developments such as HS2 and the Heathrow expansion plans and believe me if there was any truth at all in the scaremongering rumours about expanding Northolt Airport being put about by an unidentifiable but well funded group similar to Back Heathrow we would be leading the fight against that. And as we've done with both HS2 and the Heathrow project, funding the residents groups running the campaigns against these proposals. In fact, in the interest of openness and honesty, I think tonight we need to put out the challenge to those funding and running the Stop Northolt campaign to either put up or shut up. By the end of this month, I would ask them to send me the names and addresses of all involved in managing the campaign and a list of all expenditure incurred to date, with details of who is providing the funding and the amounts provided to date. We will publish this request and details of the responses in the next edition of Hillingdon People and allow the residents to judge for themselves the validity and purpose of this organisation. I will also report the response or lack of response to the next council meeting. Speaking after that meeting, I said if this is a genuine residence campaign, they will have no hesitation in providing the information requested. 
However, if they are a commercial organisation or self-interested individuals, they will duck and dive and prevaricate doing anything to avoid providing a truthful answer. Should that, as anticipated, be the case, our residents can make up their own minds as to the real interest of the organisers of this campaign, and as a council, we will treat them appropriately. By mid-December, no information had been received, and I stated, as anticipated, the scaremongers are not interested in openness and fairness and on honesty, using their spokesperson to declare what does it matter who is funding Stop North Alt. We need a council cabinet committed to returning the aerodrome to RAF use only. I have, however, been informed that the campaign is being funded by Biggin Hill Airport, who have a commercial interest in acquiring the private aircraft flights currently using North Alt. They have commissioned a professional campaign organisation who claim that there are ways of telling a story that, and I quote, become almost infectious and may change minds. In an earlier campaign for Biggin Hill, it was claimed, and this is their words, one of its main challenges is to grow its business in what is otherwise a green and residential area. The local authority, Bromley, objected to a request for increased opening hours, and in this case, the campaign organisation went as far as producing a short film, stating the film was used as part of a campaign to persuade Bromley Council to approve their request for longer opening hours. The campaign film was circulated on social media channels and sent directly to a 30,000 strong mailing list of supporters as well as councillors and officials. The campaign was successful with the request gaining approval. I added that I have no issue at all with Biggin Hill trying to grow its business and take flights from Northolt or using considerable sums of money to fund the Stop Northolt campaign but to do so in such an underhand manner is not acceptable. For the avoidance of doubt, Hillingdon Council will not be directed on policy matters by Biggin Hill or its paid campaigners, and we will, as I stated at the last Council, treat them appropriately, as they rightly deserve. On, July, on, on November 27th, I received a letter from Boris Johnson, MP, in which he stated, following the recent scaremongering that has taken place surrounding RF Northolt, I have been keen to seek further assurances on behalf of local residents. I am delighted that the Defence Secretary could not have been clearer in his response. There are no plans to increase the number of civilian commercial flights, and nor will the MOD allow airlines such as Flybe to operate from RAF Northolt. For the avoidance of doubt, Mrs Williams, the Secretary of State went on to comment on the infrastructure works to address the condition of the runway at Northolt, informing Boris that he could inform his constituents that, again, in his own words, the work is required for military operational reasons. I can further assure them that following the runway infrastructure works, there are no plans to increase the number of civilian commercial flights. There are no plans to increase the number of civilian commercial flights. There are also no plans to change the aviation terms and conditions which specifically prohibit scheduled airlines at the station. Accordingly, Mrs Williams, while I appreciate that you are just a messenger, would you please go back to your campaign organiser and its funders and tell them that as far as Hillingdon Council is concerned, their campaign is as dead as the 2013 Project Art report. You may further inform them that we find this type of scaremongering of our residents contemptible. As I said in Hillingdon People article, we are treated appropriately, which is with equal contempt. Please report that back as the answer to your question as submitted. Madam Mayor, I have a further opportunity to speak on this issue again later in the meeting, so I will conclude at this point. Thank you. We will move on to item six on the agenda, report of Head of Democratic Services. Madam Mayor, just before you call on Councillor Pratt put, uh, one slight amendment to draw members' attention to, to the <coughs> programme of meetings. Uh, the Cabinet meeting shown in May, as May the 17th, will in fact take place on May the 24th. Thank you. Councillor Pratt. Thank you, Madam Mayor. There are two recommendations in this report. The first is to note the use of urgency procedures in the decision-making process since the last meeting of Council on 2nd November, and these are shown as in the agenda. The second is to agree the proposed timetable of meetings for 2018-19 and that the Head of Democratic Services, in consultation with the Chief Whip, uh, may make any required amendments during the course of the year. I formally move the recommendations on block. Thank you. Councillor? Madam Mayor, I formally second and reserve my right. Thank you. Are there any other speakers? No, is that agreed? Agreed. Thank you. 
Move on to item 7, council tax base uh, for 2018-19 and business rates forecast 2018-19. Councillor Bianco, please. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Well, this, of course, is the agenda item of the year. Uh, it comes up this time every year and uh, it is of great interest to everybody in the chamber, I'm sure. Uh, it is uh, to uh, deal with the calculation of business rates and council tax base uh, for the forthcoming year. There, are, uh, there is one recommendation with five parts, shown on page 19 of the blue sheet, uh, which I will move. And for those interested, the calculation of council tax base is shown just below, uh, and I am uh, reliably informed, well I've checked it myself of course, uh, that uh, the calculation does work. One of my fellow cabinet members uh, exclaimed this at great length uh, in a recent meeting. So I have a double uh, assurance, uh, not only my own but another, that the, uh, that the formula is correct and does uh, work. The good news um, is that um, there is an uplift uh, again in the number of band D equivalent um, homes uh, this coming year, uh, an increase of 1,850 uh, homes, uh, so this will generate an extra 2 million approximately of uh, funding for the general fund um, in the forthcoming year as compared to this year. Uh, we will hear no doubt more about the budget in due course, uh, but for the moment I would move these recommendations as shown on item 7. Thank you. Um, Councillor Puddyford? I second and reserve my right. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Councillor Curling. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I mean, most of this we, we agree with and there's, there's not much you can debate. But there is one issue that we're a little unhappy about, and that is um, the last recommendation, Recommendation E. Um, the Council Tax Reduction Scheme has been... Um, through cuts in government funding and whatever, has been or has seen our lowest income families um, seeing an increase in council tax by staff. And by aligning it with the uh, housing uh, benefit, it does mean that the two child rule comes into, um, into action. And uh, the two child rule actually punishes women who have a third child through abuse or some other um, 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 you know, extraordinary circumstances. So we would ask, and, and I would move, that we vote on um, item E separately. Madam Mayor, I will second that motion. Madam Mayor, we have uh, a motion on the table to vote on uh, motion e, uh, recommendation E separately. That has been moved and seconded. It's now open to debate if anybody wishes to speak on that. I, are we going to put this motion to the vote? If so, I suggest we go straight to it. Yeah, if, if there's no other speakers, uh, then we go to it. Unless Councillor Curling wants to come back because you moved the motion, then we'll go to the vote. Uh, this, so what we're voting on is whether we vote A to D as one vote and E as a second vote. It's not rescinding E or anything like that, it's just on the voting mechanism. All those in favour? All, All those against? That's lost. Unfortunately that motion's lost. So now we go back to the recommendation. We go back to the recommendation. We back to the, um, recommendation. Um, are they agreed? We would like to abstain. Thank you. The Mayor, I will record that the Labour vote abstained from voting. Thank you. We then move on to um, questions from members. And question 8.4, Councillor Graham. Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. My, my question. Um, would the Cabinet Member uh, for Community, Commerce and Regeneration Councillor Douglas Mills please provide Council with an update on this Administration's offer to purchase Uxbridge Police Station and contribute £250,000 a year towards running costs for the next five years to ensure that our police colleagues have adequate 
practical and affordable facilities from which to operate. Thank you. Councillor Mills. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and I thank the Councillor for his question. Um, this administration takes it very seriously that in order to ensure that our residents are safe, that the partnership that we have with Hillingdon Police has to be a very proactive one and one that is very much one that allows us to deal with all the issues that uh, are constantly uh, affecting many parts of this borough. And one of the main things that we recognise is that Uxbridge, as our main metropolitan town centre, needs to have an accessible police station, a fact that was outlined very clearly by the many numerous residents and associations that attended the MOPAC uh, public meeting held in this very chamber back in September. Uh, the current situation is that our offer has been sent to MOPAC. Uh, they haven't yet accepted it, but neither at this stage have they totally rejected it. We have lines of communications uh, in place and indeed we are promised to have further dialogue before the end of this calendar month in order to try and progress to an outcome which we believe will be beneficial to residents. But two main things have been revealed already as a result of uh, the dialogue and as a result of our offer. Uh, one is Sadiq Khan as Mayor of London said the reason and the rationale behind the closure of the police stations across London and the closure of Uxbridge and having just Hayes as the 24-7 police counter was that without the money that would be raised from the disposal of Uxbridge he wouldn't have enough money to be able to fund the Metropolitan Police to be able to provide the services across either London or Hillingdon in the year beginning in April. So what has been revealed that actually makes that a complete and utter nonsense statement what has been revealed is that Uxbridge Police Station is not physically closing this year, next year, but maybe at the earliest in 2020. So there is no large money coming from the sale of Uxbridge Police Station until at least 2020-21. And the only savings that have been achieved is by moving two officers uh, from the front counter at Uxbridge to a new front counter at Hayes. Absolutely minuscule, absolutely nothing, just proving, I think, what we always said, this is not about operational efficiency, this is about the Mayor of London trying to make a political statement about oh, how wicked it is that the government have cut our funds and look what they're making me do. Well, fortunately, the people of Uxbridge and Hillingdon have seen through this, as is evidenced by the responses that we've been getting to the campaign that we've been raising, that this station should stay open and should have its front, front counter. But the second thing that this exercise has so far revealed is much more local at home. Hillingdon, and I quote, Hillingdon Council should scrap its plans to spend £4.5 million on saving Uxbridge Police Station I'll say that again because it sounds quite you know, strange, but make sure it's absolutely clear. Hillingdon Council should scrap its plans to spend £4.5 million on saving Uxbridge Police Station to prevent other services from future cuts. And that's Councillor Curling. That's Councillor Curling saying that. Don't spend the money on the police station. Let it go. Because he is joined by the GMB Union in attacking Hillingdon Council because we've started a consultation with our employees about some of the amendments that could be possible in terms of their working conditions and in particular around <coughs> statutory sick pay and, and support like that. Because we've started a consultation, he wants us to stop supporting residents and not save Uxbridge Police Station because of these other services are going to be cut. Well, let's just remind ourselves of all these other services that are going to be cut in Conservative Hillingdon. Are we doing away with the weekly refuge collection? No. Are we doing away with the recycling? No. no. In fact, our proposals will improve recycling. We'll actually have a new recycling centre in the south of the borough. Are we going to do away with Hillingdon First Card and make people pay more at the car parks? No. no. 
maybe the Labour Party are. And that's why he's saying it. Are we going to, in Hillingdon, stop expanding into schools so there's enough school places? No. Madam Mayor, what we've got here is a classic example. The best example we've ever had from Councillor Curling, and I'm extremely grateful that he's able to, for, for us to highlight this. A conservative Hillingdon puts residents first. A conservative Hillingdon works with its police force. A conservative Hillingdon makes sure that the core services that people like are, are protected. Councillor Curling and Hillingdon Labour Party would scrap those plans. That's the choice. Is there a supplementary? Councillor Graham? No, Madam Mayor. No. Okay. Right, next question is 8.3, um, submitted by Councillor Barnes, please. My question is to the Cabinet Member for Planning, Transportation and Recycling, Councillor Burrows. Can the Cabinet Member please inform me how many schools and students attended the recent Safe Drive Stay Alive, the event which was fully funded by the Administration? Thank you. Councillor Barnes. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and thank you, Councillor Barnes, for your question. As this Chamber is fully aware, I'm very passionate when it comes to road safety. I'm very proud that for the past five years the administration have fully funded the Safe Drive Stay Alive event, which you and your husband attended last year, Madam Mayor. And this year was yet again a great success, with 15 secondary schools participating, with a total of 1,714 pupils. With this year's total, that means over the five years that the administration have supported this event, over 8,500 pupils have attended Safe Drive Stay Alive. With, with one school in our borough, Bishop's Holt, making the attendance compulsory and also making it part of their citizenship lessons as they value it so much. So I hope in the future we continue to fund this. As you can see, it's a very worthwhile event and I would recommend everybody sees it at some point. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Leo. Have, do you have a supplementary? Councilor? Yes, thank you. I do, Madam Mayor. Does the Cabinet Member think that the dedicated road safety budget and the commitment of the Administration to make our roads safer for our residents is having an effect? And if so, what evidence can you share to support this? Thank you, Councillor Barnes. Um, I'm bound to say, and it would be no surprise, that yes, I do think the dedicated road safety budget is having a massive impact on the safety of our roads across Hillingdon. But it's not just me that's recognising this and saying this. At a recent meeting with myself, the leader and Councillor Mills, we had the Commissioner of Transport, Mike Brown, from Transport of London, into the Civic Centre. We had an agenda but he opened with a totally different part of his own agenda and that was to do with the Mayor's vision of zero approach on road safety. And he actually stated, and I've got it here in the letter, we talked about the Mayor's vision and I am impressed with the 18% reduction in accidents in the last year in your borough. Your colleagues summarised some of the initiatives including the Safe Drive Stay Alive campaign and the camera enforcement of school keep clear markings. I have asked Simon Bradbury to contact David Knowles to discuss if there is any more we can do to support you to reduce road danger further in the borough. He actually said there wasn't a London borough that could come close to us in the past year and he was very impressed and wanted to know how we've done it. So we are now in dialogue with TfL to tell them how we've done it with our dedicated budget and we will continue to do that so that every resident in Hillingdon does come first, no matter of age, no matter whether they walk, cycle, drive, we will make our roads safer. There's the evidence. This does work. Have a dedicated road safety campaign and budget, and we will continue. So thank you, Madam Mayor.
Thank you, Councillor Burroughs. Uh, moving on now to uh, 8.5, question 8.5, submitted by Councillor Kaufman. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, this is a question for the Leader of the Council. Following his statement at the last Council meeting, would the Leader of the Council please update the Council on the response or lack of response from those responsible for funding and running the scaremongering campaign about the future of the North RAF base? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Kaufman, for your question. I believe that my earlier answer in public questions made it clear that the Stop Norfolk campaign is being funded by supporters of Biggin Hill Airport for commercial advantage. We've engaged a professional organisation who claim basically that you can change people's minds by the way that a story is told, in this case by trying to scare our residents. Almost on a daily basis now, due to the advent of social media, we see fake news stories for political or commercial advantage. The Stop Norfolk campaign was well structured and funded and it took in a Labour MP, a Conservative GLA member and the Hillingdon Labour Group. But it cut no ice at all with the Conservative administration in Hillingdon. The only realistic threat to the survival of Northolt as an RAF base is the building of a third runway at Heathrow, which will close Northolt to all forms of private commercial aircraft as the airspace will be required for Heathrow aircraft due to the alignment of the proposed third runway. The current national policy statement produced to support the decision made by the Government to build a third runway at Heathrow in advance of a formal legal decision being made is so flawed it proposes that communities will have no specific flight path details so they will not know when, for how long and how much noise they will experience until after the decision to approve a third runway has been set in stone. Okay. The Council, together with the boroughs of Wandsworth, Richmond and the Royal Borough of Windsor and Maidenhead, maintain that this approach is both unfair and unlawful and will be taking robust action as appropriate. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Puddyford. Councillor Kaufman, do you have a supplementary? No, Madam Mayor, thank you. Thank you. We can then move on to um, question 8.2, submitted by Councillor Kelly. Please. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Could the Cabinet Member for Central Services, Culture and Heritage, Councillor Lewis, tell me how the visit of the 12th of December to Uxbridge Library by Darren Henley, the Chief Executive, and Sophie Lancaster from the Arts Council of England went. Thank you. Councillor Lewis, please. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and thank you, Councillor Kelly, for your question. I have to say we had a fabulous visit from the Chief Executive of the Arts Council for England, Darren Henley, and Sophie Lancaster, their Senior Manager for Libraries, on the 12th of December. We toured Uxbridge Library, and they were fascinated by the dementia table, and when we finally were able to drag them away from it, we sat down and briefed them on the library services, the Music Hub, Culture, Culture Bite, and our author events programme, Arts in Action, the Summer Reading Challenge, our theatres and the plans for our new museum and the new visitor centre at the Battle of Britain bunker. We then sat in the atrium and listened to some very young pupils from the John Locke Academy play their red plastic trombones and a choir sing Christmas carols. Some, perhaps not all, sounded wonderful, but the smiles on everyone's faces showed just how much enjoyment they and we were having. Remember, this was in a library which when I was their age, was a silent, dusty, book-filled place where you went to study a reference tome or take out a book. Whilst we always think of our library service and cultural offerings are good, it's only when you hear phrases from external professionals like Darren and Sophie that, they, that what they had seen was inspirational and far, far the best they had seen in England that you realise just how good our offering is to residents. Yeah. 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 As they were leaving, Sophie even asked me to become a peer mentor through the LGA to other cultural leads across England. Darren then tweeted, and I'll read it verbatim so you can hear his exact words, inspirational visit to Uxbridge Library this afternoon <coughs> with the Arts Council for England London team, and we, learn more, and we learnt more about the exciting commitment to arts and culture from Hillingdon Council. Uxbridge Library is a brilliant cultural beacon in the town centre. In a time when our neighbouring boroughs are cutting back their library services, 
we have committed to rebuild one of our libraries and update all the other 16 libraries across the borough. Through strong financial management, we have been able to properly finance the arts and heritage services in Hillingdon, whilst encouraging our offices to become the very best that they can be, and they have risen wholeheartedly to the challenge. Our offices are forward-thinking and dynamic. We have made sure that our offering is what people really want, and our libraries have become community centres for full of young, middle-aged and elderly residents learning new skills, studying, reading, reading, doing yoga, tea dancing, growing plants, fighting ageing, filling in online forms, and I was going to say all having fun, but I'm not sure applying for universal credit online could ever be considered as enjoyable. <coughs> I'm delighted to say the visit was better than I could have thought possible, and we should all be praising this administration to the hills for its wholehearted commitment to the arts, culture and heritage, as well as, of course, thanking our terrific offices for all the hard work and commitment they give to our residents throughout the year. Thank you, councillors. Councillor Kelly, do you have a supplementary? No, no supplementary, thank you. Thank you. So we move on then to question 8.6, submitted by Councillor... Ahmed Walana. Thank you. Councillor Puddyford. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you for your question, Councillor Ahmed Molina. The GMB Union is the third largest affiliate to the Labour Party, and over 2,000 of its 639,000 members are Labour Party local councillors. Its website claims that the GMB has one job, and that is to improve the paying conditions of GMB members in their workplace. The best way to do this is to increase the number of GMB members in order to strengthen the union's power. Accordingly, the GMB are major supporters of a third runway at Heathrow, as they see this as a way of increasing membership and thus, as they say, their own power. The GMB in December put out a press release stating that Hindon Council was consulting its employees on terms and conditions. How unusual. Uh, and this was insulting, since the Council had spent £215,000 employing lawyers to oppose Heathrow expansion and £602,860 on anti-Heathrow lobbying. The figures quoted were selected from FOI requests made by the Heathrow's campaign group, Back Heathrow. And not surprisingly, like much of the information provided by the Back Heathrow campaign over the years, was disingenuous. The first FOI request covered the period between August 2016 and August 2017. They were informed that gross costs were 215000 but after deducting contributions from other 2M members, the cost of Hingdon was £73,215. So the GMB statement is slightly wrong. It's only 66% wrong, which is fine as long as they're not negotiating employees' terms and conditions in such an inept financial manner. The second figure covers all expenditure over the eight-year period January 2007 to December 2014, and again the gross figure of 602,860 is what is stated in the GMB press release. In 2016, we produced our own press release, at which time gross expenditure for a 10-year period amounted to £757,078, reducing to £587,078 after contributions from others. This amounted to a spend of 20 pence per annum for each resident of this borough over the 10-year period. A small price to pay, even by GMA, GMB standards, to protect our residents and our environment. And that protection will extend to the well-being of GMB members working at Heathrow who should be breathing cleaner air. Only around 5% of our staff are GMB members, with the majority of staff not being a member of any trade union. And, again, for the absolute avoidance of doubt, whilst they claim to be the third largest affiliate of the Labour Party and may have some influence there, in a Conservative Hillingdon, we will always put our residents and our environment first. In September 2016, this council debated the following motion. 
that this Council notes that the Prime Minister will be chairing the Cabinet Committee on Heathrow and calls upon her and the Government to bring a swift end to the blight of Hillingdon residents living with a constant threat of losing their homes and communities by making a decision on the Airport's Commission report as soon as Parliament returns after the summer recess. Council reaffirms its long-standing opposition to Heathrow Airport expansion and its commitment to use all the resources at its disposal to put our residents first and resist any proposal that brings harm to our community. Council further notes that a second runway at Gatwick Airport will deliver the UK the same number of passengers, the same number of long-haul routes, better UK and regional connections and the economic boost that the UK needs, all at a dramatically lower environmental impact at less than half the cost of Heathrow and with no public subsidy. Council therefore believes that Gatwick is the most logical airport for increased runway capacity, supports the Gatwick Obviously campaign and urges the Government to choose Gatwick as the best option for South East Airport expansion in the long-term interests of London and the UK as a whole. The motion was passed, with every Conservative councillor present voting for it. As regards the Labour councillors, every one of them, every one of them, including those represented Heathrow villages, abstained. Such was their commitment to defending the residents and the environment of the people that this council represents. So, Councillor Ahmed Walina, I can give you and the residents of this borough an absolute assurance that under a Conservative administration in Hindon, we will ensure that a robust legal challenge is mounted at the appropriate time to again defeat the expansion proposed as we did last time. We will also continue to provide financial support to residents groups and others who will stand with this administration against Heathrow expansion. The well-being of our people and our environment is what we are here to protect and we will not be influenced by either the lack of support from the Labour group or whinging by the GMB. Thank you, Councillor Paddyford. Councillor Ahmed Walana, do you have a secondary, a supplementary? Sorry. Madam Mayor, no, I don't have a supplementary question. Lovely. Thank you. We then move on to the last question of the evening, question 8.1, submitted by Councillor Bridges, please. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Can the Cabinet Member please update Council on what the most recent League tables published about primary school performance tell us about this service to our younger residents? Thank you. Councillor Simmons. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and thank you, Councillor Bridges, for your question. I think it's very important to start by reminding members that schools are very much autonomous institutions. It's Head teachers and the governing bodies, which I'm conscious a number of councillors serve on, that provide the leadership for education in all of our schools. And Hillingdon is indeed fortunate that we have a thriving community which contains many excellent and outstanding school leaders, including a number who've taken on responsibilities beyond the borders of the school that they started out with and have taken that expertise to uh, other schools to help more children to enjoy the chances which we would all like to see them have. And clearly at a time when, as has been very well publicised, the resources which the Council has at its disposal to support the improvement of schools are being ever more constrained, having that goodwill and that drive amongst our school head teachers is incredibly important. But the Government has begun to change the way in which data on school performance is published, both for secondary schools and for primary schools. And it was traditionally the case that publishing the raw attainment figures that were achieved by children in schools in different types of externally validated exams tended to flatter those schools that had uh, a relatively prosperous catchment area. And I think we wouldn't be surprised to see that schools in quite a number of wards in this borough that are also well known for being relatively affluent have primary schools that were flattered, came out very uh, high on those particular league tables and clearly that is a great achievement it's a good start in life for the children involved but what it doesn't tell us is what we're doing for those children who start in life with their home circumstances their family circumstances may not be as good and so the shift to looking at what schools are doing in progress measures, in value added has resulted in the publication of a number of additional uh, league tables on the Department for Education website and these have been analysed by the Education Policy Institute 
and indeed have resulted in a number of articles in the BBC recently, which have highlighted the fact that Hillingdon is one of the top boroughs in the country, in fact one of 16 uh, highlighted as ones where a very large proportion and growing proportion of younger residents have access to schools where the value added is extremely high. And I think it's worth highlighting in wards like Usley, St Matthew's School, West Drayton, the new St Martin's School, built, constructed, uh, opened by the council to serve that local community, and indeed Uxbridge South, Cowley St Lawrence School, all of which are part of the same multi-academy trust, continue to show outstanding progress for children who start in life when they walk through the door of that school may not have given them the advantages that in our wealthier areas they may have had, but where the school is doing everything it can and demonstrating the progress that they're making. And we look at other schools to serve other wards. Again, in West Drayton, the, the West Drayton Primary School is recently joining the Park Federation, a school which, starting in Cranford with the support of the council, grew as a maintained school and since become a, a multi-academy trust and has demonstrated through its leadership of schools like the new Lake Farm Park, built by the council, but now providing outstanding education for children who may not, as I say, walk through the door of that school with the best chance in life. And as we look around our borough, whilst no education system is ever going to be perfect, I think it is something where we should have a pat on the back for the head teachers who are doing such a fantastic job for those children. I think we should commend the work that's done by many of those <coughs> school governors and indeed many of the parents who get involved in ensuring that the school that their child attends offers the widest possible range of opportunities. But I think we should also recognise that as an administration, a key priority that we've set out over the years is to provide a good quality school place for every child and to find ourselves moving towards uh, the higher reaches of those league tables where children not just from an affluent background but children who do not start in life with the greatest of advantages <coughs> are getting access to education that makes sure that they do have a good chance of getting on in life is something which we as Conservatives can absolutely be proud of. Thank you, Councillor Simmons. Um, Councillor Bridges, do you have a supplementary? No, Madam Mayor, I don't. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that concludes the, um, meet the work for tonight at the council meeting. So I declare the meeting closed.